guys, I want to welcome you to the weekly Wednesday for the Financial Freedom Newsletter, where every week, every Wednesday, we delve into something inspirational, motivational, something excerpt taken from the Financial Freedom Weekly Newsletter. Wherever you are, if you're listening on Spotify, on iTunes, Google, be sure to click the like, subscribe, share, comment. Without ado, let's get into the show. Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. And as you know, I'm always looking for the top 0.1% mindset, finances, life, relationships. And I'm on a mission to bring those insights, distinctions to you in this podcast and share with you. So today I'm happy to welcome Derek Johnson. Today's Memorial Day. And he's a U.S. Army veteran turned life coach that helps people break old patterns so that they can thrive, not just survive. But really what's interesting is that I love how we're going to be talking about using pain as fuel, using that pain to thrive and flourish. And in that light, uh, I welcome Derek to the show. Welcome. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yeah. You have a very interesting background and I really love this idea how you you used um you were able to stay calm in some of the most painful moments when most people would just quit or break down or snap, but you used you were stay calm and then you and you use that. So tell the audience about your story and and we'll get started. All right. Sounds good. I appreciate it. So first things first is in regards to growing up, uh, my father was U.S. Army, so he was African American, and then my mother was German, so she grew up in Germany. So they met because he was stationed in Germany. So both are very gung ho people, very straightforward and very strict. So growing up with that, it helped a ton in regards to athletics, career, and so forth. But growing up in that type of environment, there was a lot of alcohol consumption. So each parent didn't really get the help that they needed from childhood trauma, PTSD, and so forth. And I realized that in middle school is really when it went dark. So I would say 300 plus days out of the year, every single night, seven days a week, there would be a lot of screaming, broken glass, a lot of violence at home and all that. But from the outside, it was a beautiful house with the pool in Florida. Our our house is always the number one house for the parties and all that to get togethers. But once everybody left, that is when the quote unquote demons would take over. Mm. But I realized that I truly feel that the gift was I would somehow stay calm in those moments. And mm-hmm. something that would help me as a child, I'd always watch movies like Rocky or Eight Mile or any movie where someone endured adversity that was way worse. So I would always tell myself, somebody has it worse. And then I would appreciate what's happening. I don't know, it seemed like a psychotic way to think as a kid, but it always worked. So I would watch the most extreme things and say, all right, well, I have my limbs. I'm not getting shot at et cetera, et cetera. So I was like, I can handle this. So then I just started picking up books about fitness, number one, and then psychology. So as like a 12 year old, I was listening to Tony Robbins and reading Arnold Schwarzenegger books. So I would just get obsessed with that. So my outlet was always fitness and then learning how to first release, especially in the mornings, release to then be calm and in control throughout the day. And then the older I got, I realized that that was like a untapped excuse me, I tapped into that gift and I tapped into that quote unquote cheat code to have more self-control. So then that really helped me as a leader in school, being chosen as the student leader or in army ROTC in high school was always chosen as like the captain and captain of the team, sports teams and all that. And I just realized I was like, huh, this happens natural because I was always the quiet kid, but I was always the observer. So with that being said is growing up in that type of environment and seeing many other quote unquote, traumatic or dark things. I know some people have it worse, but I realized that stress management is the number one skill that I hope everyone can attain stress management and how we react to whether it's a fight, flight, or a freeze. A lot of people, as we've seen since quarantine and all that, they just freeze when stuff happens in public, they're recording. (laughs) They're not, they're not looking to help anyone or call. They just freeze and record, or they just watch. And then other people, they run away. So it's interesting to learn who does what 
And no matter somebody's response, it can always get trained so they do the right thing and stay in control in those experiences. But yeah, I'd say long story short, but pretty much sums that up. <laughs> mm, I love that. And it's really, basically, it's a very high level coping mechanism, the uh, trainer. And I love this idea of training because I've always been fascinated with um, just Navy SEALs and like special ops, um, how they're able to, you know, in combat situation, you know, use their faculties and, you know, climb out of it and get the outcome that they want. Um, exactly. Uh, you know, and I just love how you, um, so talk about this, uh, this idea. So basically, you know, you have a lot of golden nuggets and what you just said, but we talk about more and then you basically, uh, idea of flipping pain into fuel, describe to the audience, you know, your mindset, you're thinking about that. Okay. So I would always think about perspective. Do I see this pain as something that is temporary? Do I see this pain as something that cripples me and holds me back? Or do I see this pain as a gift? And it's it sounds easy to say, we hear these cliche things, we scroll on Instagram, see all these quotes, but when you're really in that painful era or moment in your life, truly testing yourself to see what can you look at that you're grateful for. So right now, you and I have our own level of stress. The listeners in the future, once they hear this, they have their level of stress, but we can all be grateful for number one, our breath. So like I always like to ask people, when was the last time we took a deep breath and just thanked whatever we believe in, whether that's God, all of the universe, whatever someone believes in. When was the last time somebody was just grateful for that breath before they started to complain? So I always challenge people to complain and excuse my language, but complain a bitch less and be more <laughs> grateful for the breath that you're taking and for your limbs and just, just the basic things. And really looking at that perspective, because a lot of people are complaining about slow Wi-Fi, this and that, traffic. Oh, I got to go do this. And when they really zoom out, they're like, what are we really complaining about? <laughs> we live in a great country and we have all of our limbs. So I like to go the extreme route, which humbles me in my mind to come back to the right now. And then I'd focus on the action steps where I'm like, you know what? Life could be way worse before I complain. Yes, I'm annoyed, but what can I control? So I would highly challenge people to focus on what they can control, mm. but flipping the script to first be grateful be grateful before we start to complain because we can attract more of that. And then those cycles repeat. But in regards to pain as fuel, I would recommend that people start to think of the darkest, lowest times that they've been in and realize that they've made it through it. So technically they're undefeated. <clears throat> Excuse me. If they're still alive right now, they're undefeated. If they look at all the trauma that they've been through, because they're still here. And at first people might say, well, I went through it. But yes, you're still alive, so you're still thriving in a way. It may be minuscule or it might be on a high level, but either way, every person is undefeated in regards to what they've been through. So I just always like to flip the perspective that it's not a forever thing, and we can use that to our advantage because we've all been in a situation where an elderly woman in public or an elderly gentleman spoke to us about the exact thing that we're going through us excuse me, the exact thing we were going through gave us a piece of advice and we just felt calm and we we're like, wow, somebody relates to me. And it was a complete stranger. It's happened to most of us. We we're like, this is crazy. But with that being said, we can be that person for somebody else because you can be proof and the example of, hey, I didn't know that Dr. Chris could go through this or Dr. Lou could go through this or Michelle went through this and is still thriving. So looking at people that have endured what you've gone through or what you're currently going through and seeing that example, she can make it, I can too. He can make it, I can too. So I'm just all about the perspective shift. At first, it's definitely difficult. It sounds easy, but in the moment again, when stress arises, what am I grateful for? And then focusing on whatever action steps you could take to control whatever's happening. Yeah, very, very, very um, yeah, this is, this is really, uh, for the audience, this is really gold and, you know, uh, wisdom. You know, you mentioned this idea of um, the past, you know, with either emotional trauma, micro trauma, uh, toxic family, and you basically, you healed yourself, uh, which can, which you can, you know, feel from through your responses, and you do not allow your past to spill into your future. And you, how do you filter out, you know, the voices and opinions to listen to and not and kind of get through the the, the mess and the garbage? Okay. That's a great question. So with the opinions, it always used to rub people wrong when I was growing up, but 
opinions, I'd always ask themselves, if I listen to you, will I end up like you? It's very blunt and straightforward, but I would, I don't know where it came from, but I would always do that as a teen. I was like that hard, t- hard headed teenager that you couldn't tell me anything unless you were like Kobe high level, <laughs> like, unless you're the best of the best, I wouldn't listen to people. I'm not saying that's right or wrong. It just always worked, but I would challenge people to ask themselves that they don't have to argue with people, but in their head say, if I listen to this person, will I end up like them? Mm. Or do I, or do I even want to listen to that person? And then flipping it to ourselves, would I even listen to myself? Because a lot of people, they give advice, but they don't even take it. Once they get off Zoom or hang up the phone, they go back to eating the cheeseburgers or whatever the scenario is, but they give a lot of good advice. So I, I've always felt that way in regards to like motivational speakers. I'm all for people helping people. If somebody is morbidly obese on stage talking about discipline, I just stop listening. And I'm like, come on, man, <laughs> like whoever, whoever it is. So I just like to look at the source, the source of the person. Would you really listen to that person? And would you truly listen to you? If not, mm. then we can just make the deep inner changes or maybe the outer changes to then become the person that we'd actually listen to and be proud of. Yeah. I love, I love that. And that's a, uh, that's really great advice. You know, that's something someone told me in the past is, you know, same thing is like, um, if I listen to you, what would what would happen? What what is the result? You know, where is this frame coming from? Oh um, yeah. Um, you know, you've progressed. You know, you coach. You're a leader. Uh, what what advice would you give to your younger self? Uh, what common traits have you noticed in people? Why you know why people struggle so so much mentally these days? I truly feel people struggle so much mentally these days. Um, number one could be opinions. They listen to everybody, then they get overwhelmed. So an example could be. Brian used to have a very high goal. And then his friends were like, oh, I don't know if you should do that. So-and-so failed. And then family starts to trickle in. And unless that person is confident in themselves, their goals will start to dwindle because they're listening to the opinions. And they're like, you know what? Should I really start this business? Mm-hmm. Or I don't really think this is for me. And maybe they didn't even have that thought until they heard all these outside opinions. And it can usually stem from friends and family. Not that they want to see you fail, but a lot of people's opinions come from a place of them giving up on their goals in the past. And then they start to spill that, even if they feel that it comes from a good place, but we can't allow people to hold ourselves back because maybe you're the black sheep, quote unquote, in your circle that is destined for a new path. But if we keep listening to these opinions, you might question yourself and you might backtrack, or you currently might be on a wrong path where you're like, Am I truly fulfilled or am I on the path of life that mom or dad or uncle or my teacher wanted for me? Because that to me, I think is one of the saddest, most depressing things is meeting people, no matter if they're 30 or 80, that went a whole path in life that somebody else wanted for them. And deep down, they're like, man, my passion was always this. It was this. And then you can see it in their eyes where they're like, shit, (laughs) I wish I would (laughs) have pursued that thing. But they listen to too many opinions. Um, but outside of that is just creating the person that you would truly be proud of the man or woman that you would look up to trying to emulate and create that person, how they look, how they carry themselves, their body language, their finances, every area of that person. I like to call it the version 10 point of doing everything we can to get to that person. Because if we take care of us, we can take care of others better because people depend on you, whether you have kids customers, clients, next door neighbor, the little kid that watches you jog up the road or walk, somebody depends on you. And if we can step up, people will want to elevate as well. And then the others who don't want to elevate, they're just going to get offended and uncomfortable around you and they'll slowly start to fade away. So it's hard at first, but after a while, it feels much better. It's freeing when we really dominate what we're trying to do because the right people will level up. And then the other people that are just like slowly start to disappear. But deep down, they're like, man, Dr. Lou really goes hard. He never stops. I need to really listen to his advice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's interesting. As I, as, as I grow, you know, age, I, it's like you have to really cut people, like people, you know, you can, you can feel them on an energetic level and you really have to be, to be blunt. You have to be ruthless with, you know, who you associate with, you know, cut, cutting people off, really setting boundaries in your time and your energy. And, um, exactly. Yeah. And then, uh, that's, I mean, and then what I love about it is that the right people will show up, um, what steps, you know, people listening to this, should someone 
take to take control of their situation? I would first challenge them to be truly transparent with themselves and just get a sheet of paper, get a notebook and a pen, go old school, put away the apps and the devices and just pen to paper and mm-hmm. write down everything that they're proud of that they've done. It could be small. It could be big. It's all about how they felt. So graduation, the first sale in business. The girlfriend said yes to the first date, the wife said, whatever the scenario is, they could write down all the positives. So starting with the positives to truly read all that and be proud and then be like, man, I'm really proud of this man or this woman. I want more of these things to keep stacking. And then we go to the, I don't want to say negatives, but the improvements. What do I truly want to improve? Because a lot of people, they push this under the rug and they cope with vices. It might be social media, it might be drugs, it might be alcohol, it might just be social events. They always have to be around people because they don't like to sit alone with their thoughts. And they're like, hey, you want to hang out? Want to hang out? Because those thoughts start to come. Just truly face those things and be transparent. It feels good. You might start crying on your sheet of paper. You might be angry. But the best part is you'll feel calmer afterwards. So start with all the positives that you're proud of yourself. And then what do I need and want to actually improve? And being fully transparent. So the hardest part is staying neutral with yourself. So we're not trying to beat ourselves up. It's more so we're flipping ourselves inside out saying, okay, that felt good. I cried. I got pissed off a little bit, (laughs) but now I know truly what I want to work on. And then from there, seeing what parts need the most attention, maybe for one person, it's finances, maybe for somebody else it's strictly health and weight loss. Maybe for someone else, it's just anger. Maybe they're in great shape and kill it in business, but they're always pissed off. Like, (laughs) Everybody has something that they need to work on, but that transparency is crucial, whether somebody's male or female, because if you can push pride and ego aside for a moment and just Mm -hmm. do that simple exercise, but it's powerful, they can gain clarity and feel calmness to then say, you know what, maybe I've been giving the wrong thing attention lately. This needs more attention because my family has been telling me, hey, you're never present at dinner. You're always thinking about the next job deal, but they're never actually present with their family. But yeah, so... I would challenge somebody to do that. All the positives that they're proud of and then truly things that they want to work on deep in their core, like whatever keeps you up at night, you have to write it down because we all have it to an extent. But most people, again, they just try to overshadow it or let their vices stack and try to run away from it. (laughs) Yeah, which is really interesting because you mentioned this topic of friendship, you know, self, one of those categories is relationships, you know, friendships. Um, When it comes to cultivating uh, world relationships, what advice would you give to people? I would always lead with a giving hand. One of my mentors always told me, lead with a giving hand without looking for anything in return. So some people could call it kindness. Some say kill people with kindness, but truly try to see how you can help this person instead of trying to get something, especially if it's somebody that you would like to be your mentor, your coach, a friend, just lend a helping hand. It doesn't have to be monetary. It could be an idea. Just learn about that person. We have social media. You can figure out a lot about a person within one minute. (laughs) And then you you can say, what would make this person smile or laugh and make it authentic? We're not just trying to like make a bunch of fluff, but truly approach that person and say, hey, I saw you really like the Boston Red Sox. I got you this thing. I know it's a little small, it's a little joke, but I see you're from Boston, blah, blah. And that person is really going to appreciate that. And then stepping in like that because it's different. See how you can get creative and stand out. And then from there, slowly build that relationship. But most importantly, we're not giving them something just in exchange to get something from them, like truly just do it, um, help them in any way, even if it's just to make them smile or laugh. And you'll be surprised what happens because most people are always like, hey, how how can I do this, Dr. Lou? How can I do that? And you're like, whoa, can can you say hi or good morning first? Like, shit. (laughs) So, yeah, so most, most people are always trying to extract and extract and they don't realize like that they come across as really spazzy and selfish. They might come from a good place, but slowing down for a moment to first approach with value and then see what happens. Maybe things will come together. Maybe the person might not even like you, but either way, at least you came across in a kind, authentic way. Yeah. I love that. Um, yeah. Lead with value as a really great interview. And, you know, as we kind of close, um, you know, what type of clients usually have the most success in their personal and professional lives that you've seen? Um, tell us more. Yeah, for sure. Great question. So the most successful, and I'm not saying, they have to be this. There's other ones that have succeeded, but the, the most common successful clients are number one, athletes. Most athletes, no matter what sport they played, whether it was a child, high school, or in college, if they played in the past, they all have that that fire and that oomph naturally in them. So they kill it in career, in business, 
relationships, fitness. So number one, athletes, because they just have that umph, that fire. So all they need to do is be guided and have accountability. And mm-hmm. then they soar. Number two would be military. Mm-hmm. Whether somebody was in high school ROTC, even that counts, or if they actually served, but they also have that structure and they appreciate the camaraderie. So most veterans, the main thing they miss about the military is the camaraderie. Mm-hmm. Yes, we like shooting guns. Yes, we like, we like doing all the other stuff, but that camaraderie of pushing through hell to still stick together, like day one, maybe I hated that person. And by the end, we're like brothers because <laughs> we've been through hell together. And we're like, hey, if something happens in public, he has my back and I have his back. We might have totally different views on life and politics, but I know he's going to have my back. So definitely that. Um, so number one, athletes, number two, military. And then number three will be salespeople. Hmm. No matter what industry, salespeople also just naturally have that fire to attack. So those with my experience of working with people are the top three athletes, military and salesmen or saleswomen as well. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And any sort of performance industry profession where you need to perform and, uh, you know, produce results. Uh, again, really, really great um, episode. How can people contact you, follow you, reach out to you and work with you? Yeah. So the easiest way is on Instagram. That will be fit with Derek to fit with Derek and the number two at the end. Mm-hmm. So I use that platform mainly. I use other ones as well, but that seems the most personal that on Facebook. But yeah. So the main content I, I post is just motivational, the wake up calls and all that. So I stick with the morning routine and I love to post it because I know my buddies or just whoever is like, yeah, he's going to miss one day waking up at four, but every single day, seven days a week, 365, I'm on there. So the whole intent is just to show proof of discipline and what can happen. It's not to say like, Hey, this is better than your morning routine. It's just like non-negotiable morning wake up times and just staying consistent and making people step up where they're like, shit, this guy's like sticking to it. So I just want others to have that same fire for themselves and to yeah. stop letting themselves down. Today's Monday. Today's a holiday. So most people are stuffing their face, drinking beers. I mean, to each their own, but <laughs> come Tuesday, they might regret it. So having less yeah. of those regrets and really showing up as a man and woman that you want to be. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I was telling the uh, previous podcast guests, you know, everybody's out at the beach partying and, you know, here we are hustling. So, um, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I love that. Uh, love the community. So great episode for all the listeners out there. Derek's resources will be in the links and show notes. Really check it out. Really nuggets of wisdom, really owning it up and uh, mindset, fitness, you know, relation, everything. So um, thanks so much. And thanks for appreciate coming it. onto the podcast. Thank you. Great conversation. I hope you really enjoyed that wonderful, inspirational, motivational piece. Again, if you, wherever you are listening, if you liked it, be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. We're on everywhere, Spotify, iTunes, Google, Amazon, Audible. And without much ado, be sure to thank this show's sponsors, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.